Hello everyone, so on the 6th of April 2024 I went to the Birmingham Gaming Convention. It's hosted at the Custard Factory in Digbeth. Been a couple of times, probably the fourth or fifth time I've been. Um, there's not many conventions on around me, so this one's a nice one for me to get to. And I thought I'd just put together a quick bonus video that shows you sort of some footage of me going round, my thoughts and opinions on the, on the day, how the convention was, and also show you everything I picked up and let you decide whether I did a good or bad job of it or not. So this isn't part of the free gaming collection. It's completely separate. I didn't want to, I don't get to go to these things very often. I didn't want to go there with limited funds. Just wanted to go, see if they had what we wanted and, and pick it up some of the stuff. It's hard for me to find out and about going about game collecting the way I do normally. So yeah, so there's nothing, nothing coming out, but I have obviously been paying attention to the list that we have for the free gaming collection. And I've been really stringent to try and try and stick to that list while I was there. So one thing I will say, I don't go to many gaming conventions and I did want to record it to show you, so I did put the GoPro on. I didn't want to stand there with my phone scanning all the, all the crates of games to show you. There's plenty of YouTubers that do that for you and you can go and you can see all the different games. Those videos are great, but I don't get to go very often. So I really just wanted to, just wanted to focus on picking up some games. So there's some footage around for you to see, but like I say, I, I was really just, I really wanted the day to be about hunting for games and enjoying myself. So I do apologize. The footage isn't fantastic but I don't get to go out and do these things very often I didn't want to be focusing on the camera and paying more attention to what the camera could see than what I could see so I excuse the the, the not the best footage compared to some but hopefully you can sort of see what uh, where I was going what it was about and, and how crammed in I was so for the day itself, I paid for priority tickets. So I got there about quarter past 10 with two friends. Um, I, I was about 100th in the line, I would say. Um, I got in about two minutes past 11, so pretty much on time. But I did notice that a lot of people that got there, probably around half 10, were quite far back in the queue. There was a very, very long queue. I don't know if they oversold priority tickets or not, but there was a very, very big queue. So you did have to show up quite early for that one. So once you got in, it was pretty good. It was nice and open and there weren't many people in there. And for about the first 15 minutes, it felt quite nice. because It's not a very big place. It, it, it's, it's very compact, which is a criticism I have because they could definitely make it a little bit bigger. And um, But for the first 15 minutes, you were able to walk around. You might be able to tell from the footage as well, there weren't too many people in there. However, by about half 11, so about half hour in, you were already packed. It was absolutely sardines in a tin. Um, it, 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 it's too small a venue. There's got, I don't know if they're checking it for the fire fire marshals ever visited this place but it does seem a bit bit too small a venue for the amount of people they're letting in as for what was there there was some good selection there wasn't as good a selection as usual to be honest with you in regards to some of the more weird and wonderful expensive rarer items there are of course plenty of them there but just my opinion didn't seem to be as much of it but there did seem to be an increase in what arguably you could call fodder there, there was a lot of a lot of ps2 and ps1 there was an awful lot of that i would have liked to have seen a bit more um newer consoles say the xbox one the ps4 because it is a gaming convention it's not a retro gaming convention it's just gaming convention but it's definitely focused at the at the more retro side of things there is some very old consoles there they did see quite a few cassette based consoles which is nice to see and there's obviously quite a few um more pokemon related pokemon cards and things Things there which was nice to see this year I, I quite like looking at the Pokemon card so there was about 20 to 25 vendors I would say so a little bit less than the last time I went last year but about right that they need to make it bigger it needs to be a bigger space because a lot of the people are backing up their um boxes which are full of games and they're sort of putting them towards the back and it's very hard to reach i'm quite a tall person and i really had to stretch and when i was there i noticed that a lot of people had to sort of get their attention to just ask to be able to see some of the games if they had a bigger venue i think Although there's only about 25 vendors, they could spread out a bit more and the boxes could be nearer the front. It would make it a lot easier for people to see it. Um, so although there wasn't many there, I still think they could do with a larger venue. And of course, it would, it would help the congestion quite a bit as well. And something that stood out quite a bit for me is the pricing. So there's, I've seen some videos and some discussions about how influential CEX are in the retro gaming market, especially in regards to pricing. The answer is definitely a lot. If not, they set it. Because whereas before in previous years, they didn't really sort of indicate whether it had a manual or not, the sort of PS1 and before, um, now they all do it. And they charge a little bit more for the manuals, not as 
bad as CX in a lot of cases, but that now has become the norm. I can't remember it being that prominent last year. It's every single vendor this year. And as far as pricing goes, unfortunately, I noticed very quickly that excluding the sort of boxes on the floor and things where they'd set stuff aside because stuff was slightly damaged or a bit more fodder like they, there were some good discounts on those. Um, but as far as the pricing goes, it was pretty much CEX price or CEX price plus, plus about a fiver, which is a shame because when I got in there, it was very competitive. A lot of stuff disappeared very quickly, I noticed. There was a few stuff I thought I might have in the first half hour of being there. Went back half hour later and it had gone. And that happened quite a few times on some stuff I was looking at. But yes, unfortunately, the pricing, although you've shown up to get there, CEX price plus five pounds with sort of standard pricing. And they seem less willing to negotiate this time round. I mean, they would, and, the, and all the vendors were lovely as well, by the way. It was a very nice atmosphere for all the buyers and the sellers. But in previous years, you could negotiate a little bit. They they would, but I wouldn't, let's say if a game was £10, if you were to offer £9, that seemed cheeky, like to, you know, 10% off, they didn't seem to, I, I heard, my, I, I obviously negotiated quite a few things, well tried to anyway, and I heard other people and, you know, like a pound off would have been the most you'd possibly be able to get. Put in the comments if you went and if you did manage to negotiate a bargain, so I'd be interested to know because I'm quite experienced in negotiating for games and I didn't, I didn't get very far with it at all, but Unfortunately, the pricing did stand out because I thought to myself, well, if it's CX price plus a fiver, if those of you that didn't go, the reality is if that's the case with it, you could have stayed at home, logged onto the CX website, ordered it and just paid £3 for postage on everything, which sort of took away the need to, unless of course you're looking for something a little more niche, a little more uh, harder to find that maybe CX don't stock, especially the older stuff, but anything that was on the CX website, while I was in there, I suddenly realized, well, you know, I probably could have got this off CX Met for cheaper with postage. So it's a shame. Obviously, you've got your Japanese items and things like that. And like I say, the rarer stuff, those sort of conventions are great. But yeah, the pricing, the pricing did stand out quite a bit. But I will say, while I was there, I spoke to some lovely people. There, there really is some nice people. There. Thank you and hello to everyone that came up and said hello. Really appreciate it. All, everyone's so polite. And even though we were crammed in like sardines, everyone's trying to scope out and get out of each other's way and swap places so other people can see. And there's no snatching. There's no elbow in there was nothing like that considering how many people there were it, it really did show that stick stick people like ourselves in a small area surround us by games we're we're happy as larry because everyone was just everyone was just trying to do their best they could in such a small space and so that was really nice and everyone was really polite but yeah next year they really have to look at the venue because the custard factory just is not big enough and i left at about two and the queue was horrendous and stuff was already disappearing in there the the better stuff was already snatched up part of me did want to sort of turn around. i didn't obviously but i did want to turn around to a few people towards the back of the queue and just be like look you're not getting in there for a very long time turn around go spend your day doing something else because it, the it, the queue was horrendous absolutely horrendous. I, I did feel bad for those that came a little bit later especially those with children because yeah it was it, i can't imagine it being nice again please put in the comments if you went your views and opinions on especially if you went a bit later i'm curious to know how much stuff was around when you got there um but yeah so that, that was my views on it a, a good day out i enjoyed it um but there, there's definitely some elements to it where i sort of left thinking well that could have been a little bit better it could have been a bit bigger the pricing was a bit funny but a great time out a great time out so what did I pick up? I'll show you what I picked up. I didn't pick up too much. I'll show you what I've got. And you, in the comments, let me know what you think. So the first thing I picked up. So this just missed out on my PS1 list. I had it when I was little, but not, I didn't play it very much. I can't read, I don't think it was mine. I think a friend had it. Road Rash Jailbreak. Um, it's, it was three pound. And this was out of one of those boxes where everything was uh, pretty cheap and battered. You don't see it very often in CEX. I don't think, I think they charge about 10, 15 pound for it in CEX. I, I was going to get it, but I know I'm not going to pay uh, play it too often um, so Road Rash Jailbreak it, it's, it's not the best of games it doesn't have a manual the case is bad but the disc is perfect so for three quid I'm going to stick it in the machine I'm going to play it for an hour maybe two maybe three who knows I might suddenly enjoy it but for three pound I'm going to stick that in the collection because it's one that I loosely have memories about um, and really really just wanted to give that one a go for three quid why not so next, I got this off the same guy, but I picked it off of him about half hour later, because obviously you do a few laps in these things, don't you? So 
I paid £10 for both of these and um, he did a little deal for me, which is fantastic. The first one, The Suffering, he had that up for £3. Now, I already had The Suffering and I, I, I'm sure you're aware, I've mentioned it a couple of times if you watch the channel, The Suffering is one of my all-time favourite games. Loads of nostalgia around it, I love it. Got it on the PS2, an Xbox version. I'm picking up quite a few Xbox games, especially in the horror genre, and for £3, I weren't going to say no. It was only £3. It's got the booklet. The disc is an absolutely amazing condition. The reason it was £3 is because it's not in an original uh, Xbox case. Not a problem, because I've got about 15 of the things sitting down there, so I'm just going to recase it, and I've got the suffering on Xbox. So I, I was really, really chuffed to pick that up. It's a fantastic game. You must play it. The graphics haven't held up fantastically, but the atmosphere on it, £3 bargain. He charged me £10 for the two because I picked up Spyro 2, Gateway's Glimmer. This is on my list of PS1 games left for me to, to complete my collection. I've, I've only got about, I think I've got about seven or eight left now. Um, he wanted £10 for that. It didn't have a price on it. I asked him how much he, and he said you can have it for 10 But because I had that in my hand at the same time, he goes, I'll tell you what, you can have them both for a tenner if you want. Lovely. Absolutely fantastic. It is the platinum version, but I don't mind that at all. The case is a little bit battered, to be honest. And there's a little dent out here and a crack, but I'm probably going to recase it with a, with a... I've got a few spares lying around in better condition than this. But it's got the manual, it's got the inlay, the disc is lovely, it's the platinum disc as well. Spyro 2, uh, and that completes the Spyro collection for me on PS1. That was the last one I needed. So £10 for those two. I don't think that's bad, because I think, I think the Suffering £6 in CEX and Spyro 2, I want to say, is about somewhere between 12 and 15 pound so a tenner for those two i think that was a good deal he, he, he was a really nice guy I had a good little chat to him um yeah thank you very much for those um 10 pound i think that's a good deal that so next, I got these off two separate sellers, but they're both part of the same series and I paid the same price for both. So these were five pound each. I got Hunter the Reckoning and Hunter the Reckoning the Redeemer on the original Xbox. So this is sort of like a, a top down hack and slash um, you're fighting vampires and zombies, if I remember correctly. I saw these on, on a top PS2 video, funnily enough, this series. Um, and I, I, there's a there's one that's on the PS2. I think it's called The Hunter Wayward or something. I want that one on PS2, but these on the Xbox um, OG, because the, the one on the PS2 isn't on the Xbox. And Hunter the Red Reckoning Redeemer, I don't believe, is on the PS2 either. So these two games, five pounds each, and um, that's pretty much what you get from in CEX, but I've been struggling to find them in CEX. They're just nowhere near me, and I didn't really want to play postage on a game that's only five pound anyway. These are, well, this one is in absolutely fantastic condition. This one is still in the case. Shall we open it up and actually see? Well, imagine if I open it up now and it's uh, it's missing the disc or something. You ready? Ready? No, it's, oh, you are kidding me. I should have checked that. It's uh, Hunter, The Reckoning, the other manual. That's annoying, it's not Redeemer. That's all right, I don't mind that too much. Has this definitely got it? Not. Yeah, that's annoying, I should have checked that. There you go, there's a live, <laughs> live reaction to that. I don't mind that too much, it's only a five, and I've really struggled to find that um, in the uh, in CX, and I just want to give these these a go. They look really good, they seem, to re um, they seem to review quite well back in the day. You don't hear much said about them. I'm gonna get the other one on the PS2, but 10 pound for those two. Happy days, really, really glad to have picked those ones up. So this last bundle of games, this is actually a gift from my wife. She gave me £30 before I went and I actually got this down to £30. So I'm rich, I think this is a good deal. Tell me what you think. So the first one we'll do is PsyOps, the Mindgate Conspiracy. So this is a third person shooter, except it's got a bit of a bit of a twist to it because it, it, you're the usual soldier, um, you get kill the enemy, kill the bad guy. I don't know who the bad guys are. It's probably some terrorist organisation. Um, but you have um, psychic abilities. On the back, it's got telekinesis, remote viewing, mind drain, pyrokinesis. I think that's fire. Um, it reviewed really well back in the day. And it, it's a bit of a, I don't really agree with the term too much, but hidden gem. I think it might be because I never hear anyone mention it. But every time I see a review on it, they say how fantastic it is. And I've seen quite a few videos on it and it looks great. Um, it, it's not too expensive at all. It's another one I keep struggling to find in CX. The condition of this is fantastic. Absolutely beautiful condition. So PsyOps, the Mindgate Conspiracy. Really glad to have picked that one up. That of course is on my PS2 list. So that's another one ticked off. So I picked that up, which is great. I also picked up Dark Watch. Now we had £20 for this one alone. Um, this is a first person shooter 
picture sort of Constantine, sort of Van Helsing style. Uh, you again, you're killing zombies, vampires, the undead. Um, reviewed fantastically well. As again, it, it's one of those. It just kept showing up. I don't think I don't hear many people talk about it, but it looks fantastic. This is an absolutely brilliant condition. This game. Um, yeah, your Jericho Cross. Um, it's a, it's a 50. The graphics look half decent. It's, it's just one of those games that once again, I saw it, had to pick it up. It's about 18 pound, I think in CX. So 20 pound, like I was saying, it's CX price plus a, plus a little bit more. This one wasn't too bad. Um, Dark Watch, absolutely fantastic. This was again on the list of PS2 games to pick up. So I'm really glad to have picked that up because there was none near me in CX. And the last one, Wipeout. 2097 another one of the last few ps1 games that i need to pick up um it says so again like i mentioned it I let most people put complete on the front and a lot of them were sealed like this i haven't opened it shall i open it see if we do a better, uh, better job than hunter the redeemer let's hope it see uh see what manuals in this one but they wanted 12 pound for this so 12 pound 20 pound i think you wanted five pound for that we got it for 30 so that was actually a good deal a, a, a good deal in my eyes and um, again he was really polite nice guy and the condition of this oh yeah that's fine oh lovely so platinum disc nice big thick brick of a manual and the disc is absolutely fine so fantastic wipe out 20 29 i'm not going to talk about that too much i'm sure most of you have played it uh platinum version again don't mind platinum at all um I, I do prefer black label but i'm not i'm not a not a black label snob um it's a beautiful condition one um yeah 12 quid he wanted for it on its own i think it's about that in cx maybe a little bit more so it's quite a good deal but again i just i've seen this a few times in cx but it's always missing the manual or it's always battered because i think it's one of the one of the earlier games that came out on the playstation one so they have got a bit of age one now but those three 30 quid absolutely buzzing on that and the last thing the last thing i really treated myself to so if you watch the free game series you'll know that last year i completed my mega drive collection don't i have not looked at mega drive games at all this year and i'm not gonna lie it's quite refreshing looking at the increase in price i don't care i don't follow it anymore i've got mine i'm happy but there's always been one little niggling thing that in the back of my head i've known that there's just one last thing to do with the mega drive that i never really did well do you know what i thought Screw it. I've been working hard this year. I'm going to treat myself. I picked myself up a boxed Sega Mega Drive 2. This is in absolutely fantastic condition. There's a little tiny sort of bend here on the cardboard and a small tear there. Other than that, this is in brilliant condition. He had this up for 110. I offered 100. He, he, he won't have it. 105. I paid for this and I, I could I'm so so glad this is one of those things I've wanted for so long but I've never I've always gone to CX and tried to find them and they're always in terrible condition CX will take a, a box mega drive in awful condition in when I was there I was looking at a few this one for 110 a lot of them there I could have picked one up for maybe 80 to 90 but the condition of the boxes were awful on some of them so it was just a case of if there's a box it's 80 90 quid job done the condition of the box be damned this one was by far the best condition one i could find and um, again if you went to the convention and you picked up a ps2 in better condition let me know let me know what you paid but as you can see it's in absolutely amazing condition it's still got the manual with the poster in the back it's got the little guarantee card it's even got the two games that it comes with i think he mentioned that this might be like a curry's member store curry's i think it's merged with pc world now it was one of their um one of their offers because they used to stick these stickers on the front and um, whether that's true or not i don't know <laughs> that's what he said it sounds true but it's got the two games with it as well two controllers all the original leads all the inlays i'm just so glad to have it i, I i've wanted one for so so long i spent a lot of time last year looking for a good condition one in cex and um, i thought i'd best pull the trigger because last time i was at the convention last year somebody had one not quite as good a condition as this but um he offered it me for 70 and i said no because that was a little bit little bit more than what seemed to be the case at the time but now like i say they, they seem to be literally 80 80 pound for one flat now so they are going also i thought i'm going to pull the trigger now on this lovely one and add it to the collection so yes 105 pounds for a sega mega drive 2 boxed this is uh, one of my the my 
best best parts of my collection. The, the, the amount of nostalgia I get. So, so far, I've had this for just a day or two, um, and I keep staring at it, so that tells you something. So this was the creme de la creme for me of the uh, Birmingham gaming market. And that's it. That's what I picked up. So in the comments, let me know. If you went, let me know uh, what your day was like. What did you pick up? Did you get any good bargains? How did you find the event? Um, let me know what you think of my pickups. Did I get some good deals? Did I overpay somewhere? Just give me your views and opinions. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Something a little bit different. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself, guys.